If you're absolutely screwed for your microeconomics final exam, I can almost guarantee you you're gonna face a tax and deadweight loss type problem on your exam. This is the easiest way to apply the tax to the supply curve and solve for the tax revenue, deadweight loss, and surplus areas. And before we get started here, I'm spending the next two weeks going over the most important things you gotta know for your exam. And if at any point you need me to explain to you this entire class in one night, go check out my microeconomics cram kit in my bio. It's packed with the 95 core concepts you gotta know and over 150 must know practice problems that guide you through applying those concepts onto your exam. All right, so now with that being said, let's start here by shifting the supply curve by the amount of the tax. For the sake of this example, let's say the tax is two bucks, equating to this height right here. That means that the supply curve is going to shift up by that $2 amount. We're shifting it up because actually we're shifting it to the left. Remember, think of increases and decreases in supply and demand with right and leftward shifts. And since this tax is restricting market output and producers are being charged a tax once they report their revenues and such to the government, we're shifting the supply curve to the left by the amount of the tax. But it's easier to conceptualize it as we're shifting it up by the amount of the tax. All right, with that said, I'm gonna erase this part right here. What we gotta understand from here is the point that this market operates at now. Look at the supply plus tax and demand curves. The market's gonna operate right here at a price of let's just say eight bucks and a quantity of we'll say nine units. To find the tax revenue rectangle, look where this line intersects the old supply curve and then draw a line across like this. We're gonna say this happens at six bucks. What this means here is that with this tax, consumers are paying eight bucks, but producers are only receiving six which makes sense because that vertical distance right here is that $2 that we shifted the supply curve up by. This difference right here is the tax per unit. And in this market now, they're selling nine units. So this green rectangle right here is the total tax revenue that the government receives by instituting this tax. According to nine units times two bucks equals 18 bucks. The government's receiving $18 via this green rectangle of tax revenue. All right, let's move into the deadweight loss that this tax causes. To pinpoint that, I want us to first understand where this market used to operate at without the tax. Look at the original supply and demand curves. Draw a line down, I'm gonna say this is 10 units right here. This market used to operate at 10 units, but the tax restricted market output to nine. And whenever government intervention causes a restriction in market output, it's gonna cause deadweight loss. In other words, a manipulation to surplus. I should say an evaporation of surplus. Because when we operate at 10 bucks, I will say this price here of $7, this entire triangle above that $7 price was consumer surplus. And the entire triangle below was producer surplus. But with this tax pulling back output to nine units, this black triangle is essentially evaporated surplus, dead weight loss as a result of the tax. This used to be surplus and now it's not. We lost it by this tax being applied to the